Are you looking to expand your knowledge on upholstery work? Well, today's video is for you. Last weekend, Connor and I went up to Hastings, Nebraska to a metal meet up at the Imperial Wheeling Machines facility, and we learned a lot of different things up there while we were there, but one of the things that I had absolutely no clue on and wanted to learn a lot more about was upholstery work. So while we were doing the uh, seminar on some of the upholstery work that uh, was going on there, I shot a video of it so that I would have something for me to go back on and actually look at and see if there was you know, things and pointers that I needed to know later on down the line that I'd forgotten. And after watching it, I thought, you know what? You guys would probably enjoy this as well. So sit back, enjoy. Don't flip forward too fast in this video because there is a lot of information that comes at you pretty quickly and you will definitely miss something if you start fast forwarding. So keep that in mind. And also keep in mind, this is during a metal meet, so there is people in the background doing other things. Not everyone was interested in upholstery, although a good majority of everybody that was there found it very interesting and very informative. So there is a little bit of noise in the background. It is in a shop type setting and all that, so just keep that in mind with the video. I couldn't edit out all the extra noises and things. But uh, yeah, a lot of good information here. I want to do a quick shout out to Imperial Wheeling Machines because Pat up there had put on a great event for everyone to learn that and that's where all this is taking place. So shout out to Pat for that and also shout out to Gail Hansen because he's the one that actually did this speech. So he's going to introduce himself here real quick and uh, tell a little bit about him and then he's going to jump right into all of this wealth of information that he's gotten, uh, he's learned throughout the, all the years and uh, all that. So, yeah, to the video. Hello, Lee. My name is Gail Hansen. I'm from Valley City, North Dakota. Sunny and warm, North Dakota. Um, I've been, uh, I'm a car guy, vintage car guy. I, don't, I drive a minivan now, but uh, I've had a ton of muscle cars in the past, or whatever. So, um, I've been sewing, I learned the trade about 1992, a little over 30 years ago. And uh, uh, same with my uh, welding. And uh, I was a construction worker, heavy equipment operator, used mechanic for 20 years. And in the wintertime, it was seasonal work. You get laid off, they wanted to drink beer and play peanut in the bar. Well, I went to trade schools and learned what got me through then. So, uh, not a lot of schools teach this stuff anymore. Um, it's kind of a lost art. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, so I landed a job uh, when the construction company folded. I got hired on at an airport to do an aviation upholstery. I'm a pilot, commercial pilot, on an airplane. And uh, so I was working for this. And uh, so upholstery is a trade, and I'm going to have to go back to my notes because I can't do that. a lot of stuff. Um, it's, it's the one trade for the minimal investment for what you can uh, get out of it as far as income if you chose the right direction in upholstery. Yeah, you can uh, get into the household upholstery and do furnitures and find that 1962 dime in the couch or whatever, you know, and, and uh, or you can get into uh, automotive, and that's fair. You can get into hot rods, it's even better yet. Get into boats. Uh, boat owners will do anything to keep their boat looking good. You can get into aviation, which I got into uh, for a while there. Um, and I, I have twelve sewing machines, different things, and different. They each have different purpose. Um, picked them up. Two of them, twenty-five bucks a piece, surplus center. It got me by everything. This one is about six years old. It sold then for twenty-seven hundred. It's a beast. It's got a deep throat to it, and I'll explain what to look for if you're looking for a sewing machine. Um, that's a lot of things. Okay. Uh, when I was employed, the first uh, uh, place in aviation, there's a UND flight school up in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and every summer they would allot three airplanes going out for refurbishing the interior. But the problem is, in uh, aviation, when the airplane's on the ground, it doesn't make any money from them. So it's balls to the wall. You gotta go big time. So they only gave me one week to do the <coughs> interior. 
So I hired another guy, I paid him a thousand bucks for doing the seat covers, and I did the rest. In that one week's time, I got ten thousand dollars. The only problem was, I only did three that summer, and that's all they allotted. So ten grand a week is not bad, all right, once you have that skill. Uh, but uh, then I went on and uh, I got to where I was at, Fargo Jeff Center, uh, in the maintenance department, and I did all their uh, hired as an aviation upholsterer, and I was the only one advertised in uh, North Dakota. So that's a plus and, uh, for me. And then uh, I got into, and they knew I did the welding, so I do all the welding there, kick welding. And, uh, but uh, as far as uh, getting into a trade, uh, it could be started as, as a hobby, and it, it could just uh, snowball on you, just blossom, just head out. So a um, couple different things on a sewing machine. Um, what you want is a single needle block machine. You don't want to find a machine that has a uh, like a chain stitch, like some of these potato bags or sacks or whatever. They got to change it. You pull one, no, opens up. Uh, you want a single lock machine, single needle or dual needle. And there's pros and cons on that. Uh, but what you do want is a uh, walking foot. And uh, that's where, there's three different styles of walking feet machines. There's one's got a, just the bottom plate will, as we're looking at it, the bottom feet will just gather the material like most sewing machines will. And then you'll have a dual feet where the, the presser foot and the bottom feet will bring that. And this is a, a triple where the actual, the bottom and the presser foot and the needle moves with it. So you're pulling everything together. Um, this will do 16 layers of leather. It's not a leather machine. Another individual here, he's got leather machines. They all have their purpose. So um, it's nice. Most machines are 12 inch throats. I paid extra to this model here is an 18 inch. Uh, I run, I, I can sew uh, uh, <coughs> or whatever, whatever I can fit underneath this foot and it's got such a high lift right there. I, whatever I can get underneath here, I can actually get through there. Yeah, it'll go through zippers, it'll, it'll do everything, you know, as long as you have the, the right uh, needle for it. Um, there's many different types of needles. Um, I could spend quite a bit of time on that, but I'm not. Um, I want to get you through a beaded foot. Yeah, so for a while. Uh, a well foot, and then we'll cover that, yeah. I, I just have a regular flat foot for most of mine. Sometimes uh, a well foot uh, for the cores. There's two different types of cords in the upholstery. You can get different sizes. I've, I've used small electrical wire if you want a real small cord, but that your, your foot will, it's got a recess underneath there where the cord fits underneath and it's, it's a guide for it. There's uh, like a plastic cord, which is like exterior use. I use it all the time. And then for like a couch or something like that, they make them out of paper. The stitch length, it's very important. You want a, a long, uh, a good variety of stitch length. Right now, we're gonna have things flying all over the place. Um, Stitch length, I, I bought this machine because I knew it matched. Uh, I did a lot of work with Lattice aircraft and they were in, uh, they are manufactured in Switzerland and their stitch length is massive long, you know. So, uh, and this is, I can pass this around. This is just a, a stitch guide of all the numbers I have on the dial. You can, you can dial down as, I don't know how many there are, in an inch, an inch there. There's probably 40 in an inch, but it's just like a checkbook. You'll, you'll tear because of the material you're uh, sewing all the way up to you know the most. I'll just I'll just pass when I pass things around. I'll just pass it around that way. So take a look at things and ask a question. Yeah. yeah. Are all machines based on the same scale? Nope. Good question. Um, no. Uh, Singer. This is a Juki. Uh, Fof is good. I own a Fof. There's an Adler, uh, Singers. Uh, there's quite a bit of machines out there that have the walking foot. And uh, just because it says uh, four on here doesn't mean it's a four on there. It could be maybe there. 
It could be millimeters. I don't know what it is. So it's best to have a guide like that, and that way you can reference if you have to map some mills. Okay. So sewing vinyl, you don't want a real narrow stitch line because you're going to end up tearing. You know, you but you don't want it too wide because you'll start seeing things behind. You know, you know, and uh, so. It's a judgment call on what you're sewing as far as the stitch length on that. But uh, this particular machine, uh, it has a, uh, I just bought, it's a needle positioner. Now it's nice to see it. And uh, so, uh, read it out. And uh, this has got a servo motor, all the old ones, and I still have some that have the old picture centrifugal motors with a brake on there. You go forever, but this is a just a, a one needle. I, I can go either fast and I can set it up or down. It clatters because there's nothing in there, but I can do one at a time, one stitch at a time. And when I'm done, I can do a needle up and press it on the bottom of the foot. That way you can it'll release the threads and, and uh, that was an add-on to the machine? Yeah that was an add-on. Yep. But I had to buy additional servo motor for it. It was like oh. 160 bucks or something like that. But <coughs> every time uh, uh, I, I moved my material, okay, so every time I move my material, I have what you call a knee lift on this. It's a side thing that raises up, or I can do this. Come to a corner, and I just turn it. That's what it is. Raise it up, turn it, and you're doing this all day long, you know. You know, so you're just doing like that. And when it's done, it releases the threads and you're out. You do have a safety clutch on them in case you hit something really hard. There's a reset button on most of the uh, machines sold now, and uh, you can reset. The, there's timing involved and everything like that. So, okay, materials. Um, we're going to cover cloth, vinyl, and leather. Cloth is probably the most, I don't even have any cloth here, but uh, cloth is the most forgiving. You can punch holes in there, you can, you can screw up, you can actually take and cut the threads out and redo it and you'll never know, okay? Cloth, uh, well, they'll show no needle holes. The only thing with cloth, um, you can't repair uh, like uh, a tear easily like you can vinyl or leather. They have kits and there's guys that do it that actually, you know, fixes holes and stuff like that. You can't do that with cloth. Cloth is more comfortable. If I had my choice, I did leather tear in my airplane, but uh, I, did it, I did it in leather because I had the leather and uh, I wanted to advertise what I do. Cloth is well, it's more breathable, okay? Uh, next step would be, leather would be next in line for breathability and more comfort. Leather has, it's a little, it's easier to take care of than cloth. Once cloth gets stained uh, or have something on there, it's tough to clean that out, but uh, vinyl is the worst. You have no breathability at all, unless you get a, a perforated uh, uh, material and they're not a lot, a lot of offered in vinyl. But uh, one thing for sure on um, all of the above is not to do what they did with this. They're, all the material should be rolled, not folded like you see this. This is gonna, this crease, uh, if, I, if I did it right, I can probably get that crease out in time, maybe with a steamer, but uh, yeah, everything should be folded or rolled. Do you use a steamer very often? A lot. A, a, uh, I was going to touch on that. Michael can hit it now. A steamer. I, I get these vintage steamers. I get them at the garage. So I got. I collect things. So I got about four or five of them. And uh, a steamer is good for several different things. Um, if if a piece is sewn together like on a seat and you tear it apart. It's not going to open up flat on you. A steamer, you'll steam it flat, so you'll get a flat form on there, so you can get a halfway decent pattern. But I wouldn't recommend 
I've been burned so many times from trying to uh, pattern off of something that's always been there that was there before. I always go with paper. Paper never lies, and I do everything in paper. Um, all my pattern work, everything I do is with with a, a paper pattern. You know, this is a, a, a pattern, and I have special instructions on everything I do. And uh, yeah, paper is, is, is the way to go. And you make the paper pattern off of the old upholstery? Uh, I, I've been burned before there. Even carpet on an airplane. I, I, I just I just don't do that because it it has moved on you through the time that it's been used. Uh, carpet, you'd be surprised. Uh, footprints in a certain area will push out and you think you got a decent pattern and then you end up scrapping. So, so you oh, make a pattern from scratch based on... I do make a pattern from scratch. Um, on, on seats, what do you do based on the foam then? Yeah, and that's something that if it's new foam, okay, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit maybe. But remember, um, the other thing on a steamer is the foam. Um, a lot of the times uh, the foam is probably good. A good indication of uh, reusing the foam if it's not powdering, if you get dust from that. If you see dust, scrap it, you're done. Yeah. But a, a steamer, if you steam the whole entire cushion, it'll actually expand it out to its original form. You'll get another, you'll get another use out of it, I guess. So uh, steamer, um, a lot of times with the vinyl, uh, if you have wrinkles showing up in uh, your job, you can use a steamer. A lot of guys will let it out in the sun for a while. The steamer advances that safely and you can actually steam wrinkles out. Uh, leather is a little tricky. I went to a leather workshop up in Connecticut years ago and, uh, and I discovered a kind of a method how to shrink leather and it's with iron, not directly on that, but through a piece or a piece of paper and that actually you will shrink the leather for you but it, there's a fine line it's just like remember that oh, when you're welding with welding gloves and you get too close it will pull up and shrivel up on you yeah leather will do that too okay so cloth oh yeah okay so the cloth um, is kind of touchy I, I try to stay away from uh, uh, cloth that has patterns in there it's better just to have a, a mono color, uh, you know, so you can go like this or this. It's hard to line things up. It's, it's more challenging, it's, you know, so you gotta, gotta watch that. Um, mohair, I did a 50 Chevy Coupe for a guy, and uh, mohair is horrible <coughs> to work with for not only when you sew it together, it's got that little nap and that nap is, is, is working against you. And when you saw it uh, face to face underneath that foot, every time it'll take off, it may take off like this by the time you're done. What you want to do is put the pieces together, get it, and hold it tight as you go across. And uh, velvets are tough. I put a piece of tape between them, sewn them together, and then once the, I, I would tear the tape away from the seam, and that's how that would say, salvage that. Mohair, with nap on a lot of this stuff, it'll show a different color in a different direction. You'll swear it's gray here, turn it around, it's white in that direction. So this guy that had the 50 Chevy Coupe, he bought, oh yeah, got a watch out guy said, oh, I'll, I'll provide the materials. Yeah, he did, but it wasn't enough so I could actually get it so it looked the same color in the directions. So I actually ended up had to do like, it was, we got it, done but you just got to watch about uh, watch out about that uh, carpets are the same way carpets have a nap to it carpets uh, I do aviation carpet and you could just do a 180 like that and you swear it's a different color so you just got to be I always mark on the back of my carpet with chart chalk that arrow which way is forward so all over that if, when I'm cutting many pieces out I'll have arrows that way I'll put it like that okay um, yeah, you know, there's, I'm not going to get into, there's railroad uh, designs or patterning and there's non-railroad where you got the pattern going up. I'm not going to really talk about that, but uh, yeah. Oh, and one thing too, uh, uh, I do spray 
uh, glue, uh, upholstery adhesive with that. Uh, a lot of times uh, cloth will bleed, the glue will bleed through. So you gotta be careful on that. And uh, we'll touch on that. So, okay, vinyls. A lot of vinyls are standard, about 54 inches wide. I'll send uh, <coughs> vinyls. We'll have, if you pull it one way, it'll have more stretch one way than the other. It's like a 60 40 percent. I'll send that around. There are some vinyls, you'll tug on those both ways. They have a, it's an all sport, and this one will have a stretch more one way or the other. Why is that important? Because I can go around a, something round without wrinkling up what I have to do with leather. So this is a, a six way stretch, they call that. That's, and that's vinyl. And that's actually a Naga hide brand. So um, on, so like these headrests for the Learjet, these here have more stretch this way than this way. And I have to have that plan because that piece that goes underneath on the back side is quite a bit smaller diameter and it has to go around that. So you, you pre-plan where the stretch is at, okay? And that's vinyl. Vinyl, you can uh, repair. There's kits and you can, there's, there's dyes and you can, there's artificial uh, PVC that you can repair, like cuts or anything like that. It, uh, cleanup is good. Um, they're rated in a matter of rubs. Uh, Naga Hide is about the best. I think they're good for like 200,000 rubs, machine rub tests before they start rubbing through. Okay. Um, um, I'm used to them all. So preference. I, I really like leather. Um, for a beginner, for a beginner vinyl, hands down. Well, don't why we can't have good you can back up and, But learn by your mistakes, punch in needle holes in vinyl. So I just go vinyl. Go cheap vinyl. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's. Oh, and then there are cold crack vinyls. They're rated in different temperatures, too. There's a. Uh, interior and exterior vinyls. A lot of snowmobile seats, you know. I get material that's good for, they call it a cold crack to 40 to 60 below. They won't crack on you. Where the other ones, uh, household vinyl, and you can't tell the difference, but you just gotta know what they are. You take that vinyl that was on your footstool, take it out in 40 below, <laughs> sit on it, and you're done. It'll crack on you. So you just gotta be aware of that, all right? That also has to be rolled up when, when uh, stored, it should be. Um, you can manipulate uh, vinyl with a heat gun. Uh, I have a heat gun, I got many heat guns, and uh, so heating the, the piece up, if you really want to honk down and stretch and pull, um, a heat gun will help you out on vinyl. Oh, one thing I was going to mention, when I learned how to sew, it's not a trade for a seamstress. There are excellent seamstress out there that are lousy upholsterers, vice versa. There's so much tugging and pulling going on. My fingers are actually bent from pulling through the years, 30 years, you know, and it's arthritis too, but there's, it's, it's more rigid than sewing a dress, okay? So, let's talk about leather. Leather, yeah, it's a little intimidating. I'll, I'll, I'll pass these around here, just kind of leather, leather samples. Uh, maybe I'll just, uh, the small pack. Just about any color you want, uh, you can get. Uh, these have to be aviation approved, because uh, they're, they've been treated with, uh, uh, they meet the specifications for uh, uh, not burning up. I have to have burn certificates for everything that I do in, uh, commercial aviation for uh, the production aircraft. Home built airplanes, anything goes. You can, whatever you want to put in. Um, leather has different uh, uh, weights. They're rated in weights uh, and everyone thinks, most of this aviation is like a three ounce uh, leather. And what do, what weights are your mostly? Four to five. Four to five? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, why do they rate 
ounces, it's it, it's not it's not the weight of the mirror. It's it's how they uh, identify the thickness of it. So uh, okay, uh, let's see. Right here, here we this go. This is colors. <laughs> this is the thickness of a leather hide from here to here. This is your hair out front, and this is all the way down to the flesh. And there's several layers of this. And uh, with uh, uh, the cow, I think it's probably about five sixteenths thick. Elephant is about seven sixteenths to five eighths. That's how thick elephant uh, hide is. So they they classify the leather. Uh, once they, you can get hide, uh, you can get with hair on the hide. They call it. And you know a lot of. Uh, like uh, Hereford style or Jersey style, you can actually have a couch with hair on it. Okay, so the next step, they would shave the oh. hair, just the fuzz off the top. And that top layer is what they call full grain. They classify it as a full grain leather. That, that leather could be a one ounce or two ounce garment, three ounce uh, garment, leather, garment leather, or it could be. Uh, uh, so it, it could be a, a variance of thickness, whatever they want to send. That's off the top. The next section that they, uh, they trim off the top comes into the top grain leather. Top grain is what I mostly work with. They'll split the hide. They got machines that they run the hide through, and they have knives, and they split the thing. And sometimes they'll actually imprint the designs on them. Okay. So with uh, leather, Harley Davidson used to put a warning out on their seats, on the underside of their seats, that their seats are not perfect. They're made with, gin, with leather. Uh, they'll have bug bites, they'll have sky marks, whatever. Uh, a lot of European uh, leather uh, dealers or processors boast that they don't have barbed wire fences for their cattle so they don't have barbed wire, but you will see that. Leather is not perfect. You're always going to have some type of an imperfection with leather, all right? So, uh, um, yeah, so the next uh, series, now this is the top quality down to the poorest quality. And the next uh, comes into stage after the top has been used. Here, you're starting to get the suede leathers and you think of the word, the genuine leather. I have belts that says genuine leather. So you got to remember the letter G, garbage. It's <laughs> absolute garbage, okay? That, they're taking it off. So the, the structures, as the, the, it gets away from the flesh, the, the structures of the leather is getting more vertical. And that's the strongest part up here. So the suede and the genuine leather is not as good as you think. Okay, the next step down next to the flesh is uh, split leather. You hear the term split leather. And they'll fool you. They'll, they'll do whatever it takes to make that leather look good, but it's getting down to the bottom. The very bottom, you think of uh, letter B, it's bonded. That's the bottom of the line. Bonded leather is just actually leather that's been glued together. So, and they'll fool you. So, just... Kind of, that's just kind of a little one-on-one -on -one what's going on with the hide the thickness, you know. So, another one-on-one. -on -one. Um, here's your leather hide. 30% of the hide should not be used at all. So, uh, the usual, this is the neck area. This is how it's laid out. About 52, 54 square feet is what it is. Um, I can roll that out and you'll look at a similar pattern. But there's certain areas of the hide are better than others. The ones along the spine is about the best, okay? Um, the neck area, you'll see a lot of uh, uh, wrinkles because the animal is turning his head all the time, all right? Uh, the shoulder area is good to use. The along the spine coming back, around the butt area, is actually the pristine area is the strongest part of the hide, okay? 
The ones you want to avoid are the flanks, the armpits underneath. That is horrible. To identify that, you look on the back side of the hide, and I'll pass this around. There's the, the flank or the real, well, one good giveaway is, is on the top side, it looks really wrinkly, and it's, it's, it's not as, I would only use that on a place that if I had to cover a, a cover down outside, I wouldn't use those uh, letter, le leathers in, uh, for uh, uh, like a seat or something like that, or armrest, I guess, and then uh, it will tear on you. I'm going to try to tear it, but it's the, it's the weakest part of the animal. So I'll, it's identified as the most hairiest part. You want to stay away from that. So I'll actually uh, go back and I'll take a piece of chalk and look underneath and see where the sky marks and I'll circle those and I have to select all those pieces and flaws and make sure they're not in there. But the first part, stay away from. How do you tell what's leather and what's vinyl? Oh, these guys are really clever nowadays. Even though there's a sheen difference or whatever, and you can probably see it different. There is, it's very, very tough to distinguish leather from vinyl. The only way, I had an old timer uh, taught me this, the only way you can tell the difference between leather and vinyl is a press test. And it's got to be on some type of a, a, a cushioned or a foam type backing. Leather will actually have minute uh, uh, lines going to the center of your punch, okay? Vinyls will not, and I'll pass this around. You can punch that, and you'll see those small lines in there. Catch the right light in the right area, and they'll fool you. On my Jeep Cherokee, brand new, they said, oh, leather interior. That's just a little part that your butt is sitting on. Yeah. You press it, yeah, you never swear. Going off to the side, it's nice and smooth. I'll pass it around. Yeah, it, it's just a racket. Okay, so uh, leather, I do a lot of fleece work, uh, uh, sheep skin. What's nice about aviation sheep skin, um, it's really comfortable. Pilots love it, but it doesn't last a year and you're done. You know, it starts matting down and it gets all crappy and everything. So, uh, and they, they have burn certificates on it, they've gone through a, a burn test and to see if they don't, if they self-extinguish, okay? So, uh, talk about carpets. Carpets is a trade in the aviation industry that, huh, if you can get a dental uh, piece of carpet six months later, you're lucky. <coughs> they change the yarns so much on, on what makes up carpet, and there's many different styles of carpet. I'm not gonna get into that. But this here, I actually, I, there, this one is a, a surged edge with a serger. One inch of this takes one foot of yarn, and I have a machine that's clearly goofy. It's got a flyover hook, and it's just hilarious to look at. Expensive machine, but that's a serger. Nice looking, Learjet's have it. The only problem is Learjet, or uh, surged uh, edge, like embroidery, pull the thread, and it's a chain. You're gonna, it looks like crap once you start. So another alternative is uh, carpet binding. Um, and that's this edge there. I'll send that around. And that's pretty durable. You can uh, overlap uh, wherever you want on that. And there's, yeah, there's just many, many, many. Oh, I'll just pass. These are the threads for the serger. So you can, whatever combination you want. Carpet binding tapes. It's crazy. Whatever you want to work with, you know. The same way with the threads. The threads they offer, this is a polyester threads. It's not like a, a, a seamstress thread. These threads, so your wife is sewing a dress, you can take the thread and easily break it half. You'll cut yourself through to the bone before you, you uh, break one of these uh, threads using a pull string. So this is different. Uh, I use that. That's got the uh, ultraviolet uh, characteristics. Anti. Uh, how do you, how do you apply this one? The binding that, on the that's side. That's a two-part deal. The the tape come in. Uh, uh, I didn't bring that in. I do have that. Make it outside. This rolls like this. 
Okay. It's a pretty easy process. Maybe we could time to talk about that. Is this where you buy the binding? Yep. Yep. National Park. Uh, there's there's several. If you look online, you'll find stuff. Okay, you want to put a new uh, chunk of carpet in your car, use a steamer as you put it in. It remelts the glue, and that will conform around your bumps, and this is unbelievable what a steamer will do with uh, a new carpet in your whatever it is. My case was an airplane. I had to go around a corner and in and there with a steamer. It just, it works magic, okay? What was that foam called? Uh, memory foam, there it is. Uh, Thanks to Piper, they used a bunch in the mid or late 70s, early 80s foam. Their foam disintegrated and it created work for me because uh, their top material couldn't hold up. This is garbage. Don't ever get this. They're different things and don't ever have them. I'll pass that around too, you know. And uh, uh, I would recommend not putting memory foam in, in there. It's, it's, so with foam, there's actually two different classifications, open cell and closed cell foam. And that's uh, foam that, uh, open cell foam is, is absorbable by water. Closed cell is like your Nerf noodles or whatever that kids play in the swimming pool. That's a different one there. So both, I, I use them both. Uh, there's different, uh, uh, different uh, applications there. Just the adhesives. I use, uh, I buy it in a five gallon can. Again, this is, I, I clean it once a year. Keep it full, that's the secret of your containers. This is a glue well and a paintbrush there. You can either uh, apply either way. It's a contact adhesive. Um, once you spray both areas like this and that, that, let it tack up so it feels like the back of a uh, tape and uh, Put it together, once they're there, they're there. If you really want to send it home, take a hammer and hammer your glue areas. You will not, you'll destroy that before, in, in about a day and a half to two days later, you will not get it apart unless you use 3M uh, uh, adhesive cleaner. Not the super adhesive cleaner, just get the regular stuff. You can salvage with that, but it is, it is, it is tough. Needles, there, there are several different needles. They're usually all the same length, except for the opening of the, of the needle for the thread to fit, fit through. And there's a channel going down one side of the needle, and if you use a larger thread, it won't fit inside that channel, or it won't fit properly through that hole for the spinning hook to come around and snag. Okay. Um, so there are different sizes for the recommended thread to you. So, um, I used to, you know, doing leather, there's leather points and chisel points and round points and uh, there's all kinds. I just use the standard uh, round points is what I use now. I did run across a titanium needle here about, uh, it's been a couple of months now. I used to change them on a weekly basis. I do a lot of sewing and uh, uh, this one here I had for a month. I just changed it just suspicion wise. And it, they're really durable. I found out through one of the forums online that these guys are using this. So, um, yeah. Okay. So other other items that I use um, for the trade. Uh, these are little. They're stretchers. And I tear things off with that. Uh, I'll send this around. This is a a, a pig notcher, uh, ear notcher for uh, putting a little pattern. Go ahead and stamp a, a couple of those. You're gonna have fun with that. I put a spring in there because the spring broke. I use that for pattern work so I can do line up on my pieces. So I'll line those things up on my notches and uh, according to the sewing allowance what you use, all right? Um, scissors. Um, I only hand sharpened my scissors. I had a guy that did uh, uh, with machines and I, I had a couple other, I didn't bring them with. But he took the tamper and the blades and he ruined it. He spent too much time on the wheel. Some of the old scissors, um, they're really designed ergonomics. I'll fed her on. Do not drop this one, please. This is, can't replace it. I have many different scissors for applications. I got small scissors. I got a holster right here. Uh, there's so many different uh, applications. Some have a different 
Uh, be careful. If you want to cut yourself to the bone, go like this. But you can actually feel it. I just sharpened it. These are sharp. I'll pass them around. No guarantees, no band-aids here. So one thing I never use in upholstery is ink. Sharpies are not a friend in a poultry world, okay? So ink does not work. A pen does not work. The guy that was helping me with seats on these uh, uh, airplanes in the summertime, he was marking his things. Uh, ink will bleed through. You would be surprised. Once ink is in there, and oh yeah, if you catch it within 12 hours of putting it on, you may be able to get it off after a day or if it's been heat set, you're done. You're done. It's done. So I'll use China markers. My favorite. Oh, come on now. I wanted to brag about this. Is uh, chalk. I, I like chalk a lot. And. Uh, is it? Oh, the one I just stepped on? Yeah. So I always put a. Uh, you always uh, have a piece of chalk that's on your bench and it rolls off the edge. I put a piece of tape on there, a little piece of tape. That's going to keep that thing from rolling off the edge. Not going to keep it from. Is that uh, just regular chalkboard chalk? Chalk, chalk. And what I do when I when I do my pattern work, my pattern is out here, and you will see that when I lay it out, I use I don't I don't use uh, sharp. I'll just go like this and just do the edge like that. I just go out from the edge. Once I got it, I got the line. So I use these down to a nub. And you don't sharpen them or anything? No, right? absolutely you, not. Blunt. No, no, I use the I use the blunt edge and I just put it down like that and I'll just, I got my registration marks there and I'll just go around like that and it shows the pattern. Huh. Yeah. Chalk will never hurt your material. All right, uh, razor blades, you use them a lot. Uh, staples, I have a uh, stapler when I do that. Uh, marine use, I, I have air staplers uh, that uh, works out really nice. I use, uh, for marine, I have uh, stainless steel staples, and you can get those various, whatever. But that's, for the first 15 years, I never had an air stapler, it's all by hand. Um, putting material together, um, temporary. If I wanted to put those pieces together, I'll use a plier stapler if I didn't hold it uh, face to face in, underneath the machine. I'll, and then I get up to the stapler. Plier stapler? A plier stapler. A plier stapler, they call it. Huh. It's like when you go to the hardware store and they put a, something in there and they fold it over and they, with a plier stapler. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 So that's what I do. And then pull them out later and you go. Yeah, it works perfect. It just you just sew right over those. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. But you got to be careful as you pull the staples out. Sometimes they'll cut the thread. Okay. Yeah. So just be careful on that. Um, Use pins at all? No, no, no. That's for yeah, seam Yeah, that's for seam um, So we're talking about sewing allowances. Uh, certain areas have a different sewing allowance. That's the the amount of line from your thread to the, the salvage side, and that depends on what material you're using. A heavy, tweedy cloth probably needs probably a 5 8 sewing allowance so it won't pull and unthread itself. Where uh, uh, leather, you could probably go maybe a sixteenth of an inch from the edge and be okay. So there are different sewing allowances, and your, your prints, I have notes on here what sewing allowance is here. And I have my sewing allowance is a quarter inch sewing allowance here. And I got three eighths sewing allowance here on the back side. So I have a magnetic guide. A lot of guys put lines on there. So I put a magnetic guide right on, on that and put the material right up and uh, it's, it's right there. So that's how I use that. That's been pretty good. When All you, right, when, we're almost done. When you do a seam that's not being seen where it's on the inside of a, of a two pieces. Yep. What's your ideal length of stitch there? Where you're not trying to match somebody else's stitch where you just, uh, I, with leather <coughs> or vinyl. Yeah, you know, you could do some tests. Um, you know, here I got several different uh, lengths there. Um, I don't know, I, 
Some of those are real long. Stitches. Yeah, some are really, really long. Which yeah. probably wouldn't be good for that. No, for no. Pull apart. Yeah, they, they probably, Pucker, you know. In the aviation, if I always double seam everything, if it doesn't get a top stitch, I'll double seam everything. I don't want to have one stitch fail. You've seen these bags around here. They yeah. have one stitch maybe, and it failed, and they're leaking. How do you do a great job of keeping that spacing between the two different, since you're not doing it with a double needle, you're going back and doing it again, right? Yeah. So you, how do you keep the spacing Well, you consistent? can actually move your magnetic guide one way or just shift it you a little bit. You just do it all with that, just yep. the magnetic yep. guide? Yep. Absolutely. Eyeball it. Yep, yep, yep. Double needle machines, I got a double needle machine. The problem with double needle machines is they're fixed space yeah. between. Okay, mine is a quarter inch. It's probably not good for uh, this industry. Made for that, maybe that's uh, 5638, maybe between those. Yeah, mine wouldn't look good on this. Yeah, so you gotta be careful. And then you could run a, a single needle on a double needle machine, too. Okay, okay. Um, anyone get slice and dice from the scissors? Yeah, <laughs> this brutal that one there, but uh, Okay, um, the, the smaller the sewing amount, you can make it look better, but you have less to worry about. If you're sewing blind, you've got three layers there. You've got the top layer you're sewing through, and hope the hell you're catching those. Um, you have to uh, worry about that. A lot of times, I will put a half inch sewing allowance, do my top stitch, come back and click as close as so it really fits better that way. It's a professional job. You won't have that bolt, that bunching that you're talking about? Absolutely, absolutely. I have, I have top stitch machines where they have a guide that, that goes into that first groove. Okay, say for example, um, we, we sew the, the two pieces together and I want to sew the white and this, uh, let me probably go to, I just did this by eyeball here. Uh, this is probably the one. I, I'm, I'm gonna sew on this side, so here's where I got my foot, and here's where the, the thread uh, is. Yeah. See how it follows that? Sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a top stitch, guys. They are, they are worth your money. They're not a lot of money, but man, oh man, you get a real professional job out of that. Uh, white paper, I use a... Uh, uh, Painter's paper instead of the paper that we see around here. I get it in white. Uh, that white, it's see-through. You can, you know, you can see the pattern. You know, it's it's really nice to work with. Fragile? Yeah, it is fragile. If I tear it, I'll, I'll I won't mend it with. I didn't have uh, transparent tape here, but you can whatever you do. If you ha have to make an amendment, I just use the small scotch tape. You know, gift wrapping tape over and re-notch it or whatever you want to do for pattern work. Almost done. A map wheel. A map wheel is a, is a device where it measures, you make your first reference notches. So everything I do, I'll actually, this one here is not left and right uh, identical, mirror image. But I'll, I'll do, uh, I'll make my reference notches first. And then this map wheel actually measures, and I got a picture of that on my uh, phone there, but it'll measure exactly the distance. And then the adjoining piece, then I'll run that out and mark those spots. So at that specific sewing allowance, it'll fall into place. So you won't have that unnecessary bunching. Map wheel is real important. It, it, it's a time saver. Nothing worse than having an S curve and, and bringing a, a joint S curve in there and know where you're at, but you, you have to honor that specific sewing allowance, whatever you, it is. You get where this it, map wheel? Um, online, and I'll, I'll bring up a picture of that. Um, it's a, yeah, uh, they're about 40 bucks. They were originally designed for how many miles on this map, from this town to that town, you know? That's what is there. So there's many <coughs> settings on there. Oh. Really accurate, but it, huh. it takes the guesswork of what's going on. Not a lot of guys know that. I have a leather skiver uh, that uh, actually trims the selvage on leather for these high-end uh, 
It's made in Germany. It's a Fortuna leather skiver. It's a spinning drum, and it shaves the salvage area down to a pinpoint where you put them together. There is no back bump whatsoever. So, do you, um, use, do you use burlap at all? Yeah, um, if I had to, yeah, it's a, it's a good foundation for the fold not to go through, you know, on cars. I'll use a burlap in a couple different ways, hovering those down, put your foam on top of that. Uh, if you want to go one step more, heaven forbid the guys want to put their horse hair back in there. They actually use horse hair. That's why I was curious. Like, yeah. what, what was in my see? I don't even know. Like, it was like this. It was like jute almost. Yeah, like it, like a, they, yeah it's, like, they actually yeah. used horse hair in the day. Model T, Model A days. Oh well, yeah, this was a sixty. This yeah. was a yeah. sixty. So, so this is here. They still call it horse hair, and it's just now they have Dacron or Fiberfill is what you use now. It takes up the fill. Just you know, it, it takes up the some of the imperfections the guy can. Or it puts it yeah. So. Do you use uh, scrim between the foam and the leather? Yeah, good point. Um, there's uh, scrim is a, a, a foam back. So this is quarter inch uh, scrim or foam back, and it's just so that the thread doesn't pull through. If I wanted to, uh, and I never glue leather to foam. Never do that. But guys do it, and it creates a modeling mess later on in life. But uh, this, the backing on the cloth on this, and you get this in one inch, half inch, quarter inch, sixteenth inch thickness, it's prevent the threads from pulling through. When you sew I'm it. thinking of the, the really thin material, it's almost like silk that is slippery, that you put between the vinyl and the foam. You mean just for uh, ease for installing it on? Yeah, yeah. it also kind of makes it sit nice, you know. It's like a, it's like a, it I almost looks like a super thin plastic bag. Yeah, yeah. Oh, plastic bags, that's a good thing. You know, I'll, I'll do a plastic bag and put a vacuum cleaner and it sucks down to nothing and put it in your, your uh, cover and then pull the vacuum cleaner out and then tear the bag out later. So yeah. there's ways of doing things. Yeah. Uh, don't ever use silicone because if you're in a welding shop, that's a no-no for a welding shop. But uh, um, yeah, some guys spray uh, silicone on there. Um, Long ne needle nose uh, pliers. Um, I do things with the needle nose a lot, and uh, I, I actually time my uh, needle, or set my needle in. I put the needle in where the scarf is at. The scarf is in a narrow area there. It'll only fit in one way. You put that at six, six o'clock position up in there, you're done. You don't have to guess at all. You don't have to get down in there. You got it right there. <coughs> So if you want questions, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how that works. Um, we're almost done. I said that three years ago. Uh, um, besides uh, paper, uh, mylar fold, or uh, mylar drafting paper is what I use for patterns. Durable, so. Um, that's uh, online, eBay, yeah. I'm about talked out by it, I'm done. <laughs> oh, okay, yes, sir. Okay, good. Okay, a good, my question was, uh, my sewing machine does not have reverse, and what if I have five sewing machines, does not have reverse, I will, I will start the stitch, lift it up, open, lift the needle up, go back, drop it down, and sew it again. That's how you do it. Doesn't wind your needle up. No, no, it's one. Never turn a sewing machine backwards. They're designed for one direction. Okay. Um, if you don't want that back stitch shown, um, pull it, pull the thread all the way through and back tie it. If there's enough tails there, and always tie three knots on that. They always do three knots on that, and the first knot is, is a double wrap around on that. And, and that will lock it, so it won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yep. you, you don't back stitch, you just back it off, is what you're saying? Yeah. For the machines that don't have reverse. Oh, for machines that don't have Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you do have reverse, you do back yeah, stitch. Yeah, yeah. And how many stitches do you back stitch? Uh, it depends on the thread. Uh, the heavier thread, you probably need a little bit more because it wants to unravel on itself. Um, so I'll probably go back and forth uh, just maybe three times, and okay. that's it. That's good. Three times will 
Yeah, it's pretty fine tool. I've never had problems. And like a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch? As long as it's not seen in your seam. If it's in your salvage area, you can take that whole half inch salvage area if you want. As long as it doesn't go into the show me side, the money side. Okay. If it does, you can back tie it. Uh, there's times when I do back stitching and I'll, I'll put my salvage and I'll, I'll put the goddamn uh, top stitch thread and then I have to go ahead and hand, I'll have to have my thread long and actually punch the holes in a long line and back tie it. You'll never, you'll never see it. I see. Yeah, you just back tie it. Can you use that piece though? Uh, yeah, you can, but uh, the problem with the adhesives are uh, super glows. Uh, you put one touch there and it'll be stiff. You'll see a bump. It's not good. Yeah, you can get by. There are flexible glues you can use that, but uh, I've had to resort to that. Yeah. If they're not, yeah, yeah, you can do that. I mean, they're, yeah. 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 Are we done? Awesome. <laughs> oh.